Assembly in Christ Church, London, under the leadership of Rev. Godwin Ajegbu, invites you to our power service, deliverance, healing, restoration, and salvation. Are you broken or oppressed? Come and be partaker of free salvation. Our service times are Monday Deliverance Service, time 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Friday, Bible Teaching and Prayer. 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Sunday service, Holy Ghost Move, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Come and receive power to overcome in life. For more information please call us on the following number. 0742948 Or email. Rev. Godwin at dominionchristchurchlondon.co.uk or dominionchristchurch at yahoo.co.uk Trains and Buses Station Alperton Station, Wembley Central Station, Wembley Park Station, Hanger Lane Station, and Harlesden Station. Welcome once again this Sunday evening to the Dominion Christ Church television broadcast. My name is David McKibbitt and I am here to represent the Dominion Christ Church under the leadership of Reverend Goodwin and if you want to go to a church where God is moving, where miracles are taking place, where people are being saved, healed and delivered, then I want you to make a note of that address that is on your screen now, Unit 29, Abbey Industrial Estate, Woodside Avenue. You go down to Woodside Avenue and you turn into Woodside End, Wembley, ha zero one. NR. Please make a note of that as I am speaking because I want to announce that the church has been doing a four-day meeting and I tell you the power of God has been in those meetings. We have seen God move in a mighty way and the last of those meetings or tomorrow and you do not want to miss our jubilee of increase the last of the meeting is tomorrow come along it is from 11 o'clock to 5 p.m try to get there early because there's many people coming and if you want to sit you need to get there early we have got archbishop dr aac evangelo that will be speaking there is a man that God is using in the miracle delivering and healing ministry. He is a popular international preacher and you do not want to miss that meeting. Come along expecting a miracle. I want to share with you today some verses of scripture but I'm going to read first of all Exodus chapter 3, verse 8. Exodus chapter 3, verse 8. And I'm going to be speaking on the subject, the day of your deliverance is here. The day of your deliverance is here. Exodus 3, 8. I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey and unto a place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Parasites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. God sent Moses down to Egypt with a message to say, I have come to deliver them. The children of Israel had been slaves into Egypt for 400 years. Many of them had not known anything but slavery. By that time, everyone had been born into slavery. They did not know what it was like to be free. They did not know how to make choices themselves. All they knew is how to obey the Egyptians. But God said, I have come down to bring my people out to deliver them. We're speaking of the day of your deliverance is here. But I want to tell you, friends, let me read Exodus chapter 5, verse 1. Maybe you have been in bondage for a long time. 
Maybe there are things that have been holding you back for a long time and it seems that you've been in slavery to sin, slavery to drug addiction, slavery to alcohol, slavery to the devil, slavery to, to, to lust. And it seems that you've been held back by a long time. But I've got news for you. The day of your deliverance is here. The day of your deliverance is here. I'm going to read Exodus chapter 5 verse 1. Exodus 5 verse 1. And afterwards Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. On your telephone, on your, on your telephone, on your television, there are three telephone numbers coming on your screen. And if you want prayer, if you need deliverance, if you need a healing, if you need a miracle, I want you to phone any one of those numbers. This number here, 0 778 931 that's my number. That will go to me. But on those other numbers equally, there are men and women of God waiting to pray for you. That those people that are waiting to pray for you are people that have been used in the healing and miracle ministry. And so you can phone those numbers, you can phone that number. If you want to speak to me personally, there's an email address. And also scrolling along your screens are the times of the services that we have during the week and our Sunday services, so you can make a note of those numbers. Exodus 5 verse 1. And afterwards Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast in the wilderness. Exodus 9 verse 1. Exodus 9 verse 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. I tell you, God has sent me here today. God has given me a message to tell everyone, every demon that is attacking you, every person that is holding you in bondage, it's time to let God's people go to take their hands off of you because today is the beginning of your miracle. Today is the day where you begin to leave the life of bondage and walk in freedom and in victory. Hallelujah. Today is the day of victory. Today is the day of your deliverance. And I don't know what's been holding you back. It may be family members. It may be people at your work. It could be generation curses. It may be sickness in your body that is holding you back. There may be members attacking your congregation. If you are past that watching this, but I want to tell you, the day of your deliverance, the day of your victory is here. We have to realise, if we are going to win the battle, we are going to have to know who we are fighting. We are going to have to realise who our fight is with. Oftentimes we lose the battle because we fight the wrong person. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 verse 12, Ephesians 6 verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We have to realise that we are fighting the devil. It may be human beings that are holding you back, but behind that attack, is the devil itself. And oftentimes, we end up fighting man 
when we should be fighting the devil. Man is only the instrument the devil is using. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, we read, And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past you walked, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, that if you are not in Christ, you are in the devil. Some people say we're all God's children. No, we're not. We don't become a child of God until we are born again. Jesus said to some people, ye are of your father, the devil. There was a time in my life where the prince of the world, the prince of the air, the god of this world, ruled my life and I was under his control. But in 1974, in a church in Forest Gate Field Road, Jesus came into my life and he transformed Later, me out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, and instead of being a child of the devil, I became a child of the living God. And now I cry, Abba, Father, the devil is not my father anymore. For when I pray, I pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, because I have been delivered from sin. I have been delivered from the power of sin and sin shall not rule over me anymore. I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. I am a child of God. I have been delivered, and that to me is the greatest form of deliverance, is when Jesus comes into your life and changes your life. But we have to realise that as Christians, we are fighting the devil. The devil might be using your employer, he might be using your family members, he might be using your church members, but our ultimate fight is with the devil and we need to get spiritual victory if we're going to have any kind of victory. Let me give you an example. A car goes down the road and he hits a child. The police stop. They don't arrest the car. They don't put handcuffs on the car because the car was only the instrument, inside that car there was a driver and it's the driver that was arrested. The car was only the instrument that caused the damage. There are people that are attacking you but they are only instruments of the devil and it's no good fight in flesh and blood. We need to realise who we are fighting and we need to conquer the strong man and take authority over the prince of the air. Jesus knew who he was talking to. When the devil tried to use the great apostle Peter to turn him away from going on the cross, Jesus knew who, who was behind it. We read it in Matthew 16, verse 21. From that time forth, Jesus began to show unto his disciples how he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, say, Be far from thee, that this shall not be done unto thee. Pe Peter was using words to try to turn Jesus away from going on the cross. But thank God Jesus went on the cross because if Jesus didn't go on the cross, there would be no forgiveness of sins. We could not be forgiven. But when Jesus went on the cross, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. He that knew no sin became sin. When Jesus went on the cross, he that didn't sin bore our sins and died in our place and paid the price for our sins so that you and I can be redeemed. The reason that you and I can be saved today is not by our good works, is not by anything that we can do, but by what Jesus done 2,000 years ago, we can be saved. 
because of what he done. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, and we can be saved now. Hallelujah, we can be saved now by calling upon that name. And if you don't know Jesus, phone any one of these numbers. That number there, 0778690931 is my number. Phone any one of those numbers. There are men and women waiting to pray for your deliverance, pray for your miracle, pray for your healing. Phone, that, phone those numbers now and receive your miracle. Look, look what Jesus said when Peter tried to turn him away from the cross. He said, but he, that's Jesus, turned unto Peter and said, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offence unto me. He wasn't calling Peter Satan, but he realised that Satan at that time was putting words into Peter's mouth and Jesus realised who the fight was. He didn't rebuke Peter, he rebuked Satan. We need to know who we are fighting and our fight it's not with our pastor, it's not with our employer, it's not with our husband, it's not with our wife, it's with the prince of the air, the god of this world. And we need to take authority over the devil. Because if we win the fight in the heavenly realms, if we win the spiritual battle, we'll have victory in every area of our life. The Apostle Paul the great Apostle Paul recognised the power of the devil in hindrance, to hindrance him. For we read in 1 Thessalonians 2.18, 1 Thessalonians 2.18, Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Paul was saying, we would have come unto you, but Satan hindered us. You see, we need to know where our hindrance is coming from. If you are in the will of God and you've done everything that you should be doing and not succeeding, it may be that there is a spiritual battle going on that you need to fight and you need to win that battle. But notice what I said, if you know you're in the will of God, your failure may be because you're not in the will of God. But if you're in the will of God and you're doing everything you should be doing, there could be a spiritual battle. But you've got to do everything you should be doing. It's no good if you're doing an exam and you fail the exam because you didn't study enough, you didn't revise enough, you were too lazy. It's no good blaming the devil. That's you. That's you. The only devil that is at fault there is the one you see when you look in the mirror. That's not the devil's fault. If you want your church to grow, but you don't evangelise, you don't hand out flyers, you don't speak to people, you don't encourage your church to evangelise, then don't blame the devil because the church ain't growing. You've got to do your part. And if you've done everything that you should do and you're in the will of God and you're still not succeeding, it could be that there is a spiritual battle and you need to declare war in the spiritual realm to get the victory. If you've studied and you, and you fail, then there could be a spiritual battle. And we need to realise that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against demonic powers. Demonic attacks are not always obvious. In Acts chapter 16, we've got an example of where it's not obvious. Let me read it. Paul had been in a certain place ministering and preaching, and I read in Acts 16, verse 16, and it came to pass that as we went into prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, which brought her master much gain by true saying. And they followed Paul and thus crying, say, these men are servants of the Most High God. Now notice, this woman wasn't saying they were devils. They, she wasn't crying out, these are false apostles. She was saying, these are men of the Most High God. And they were men of the Most High God. Can you just imagine there's Paul and Silas walking around, this woman saying, these are men and the most high God. If that had been some people, they'd have been happy. Oh, she recognises us. She's calling us a men of God. Been some churches, they'd have made her a deaconess. But I want to tell you, she was not 
saying who they were, but warning people against them. And Paul recognised what was behind it. Let me tell you, friends, it's not everybody that praises you. It's not everyone that says wonderful things about you. It's being used of God. Sometimes they have an ulterior motive. I've seen people come into a church and say wonderful things about the pastor just to get their trust and then they show their true colours. They come as wolves in sheep's clothing. And when it's not obvious, we need the spirit of in, we need the spirit of discernment to understand. And in Acts 16, verse 8, and this she did many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said, I command thee in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out of her that same hour. Paul recognised, behind all her great words, behind all her words saying that these are men of the most high God, there was an ulterior motive and it was not of God. And he recognised the spirit that was in that woman and he cast her out. Friends, you've got to be careful. What's your friends? They can do you more harm than your enemies. You can know your enemies are, but it's a friend you've got to watch. Because the devil comes as wolves in sheep's clothing, using flattering, wor flattering words, playing on your ego in trying to deceive you. How did Satan deceive Eve? By saying you will be like God. You'll be more spiritual, you'll be like God. Watch people that use great words. Jesus also recognised that some sicknesses are a result of a demonic attack. Notice I didn't say, I said some. I didn't say every sickness. I didn't say the majority of sickness are demonic attacks. The majority are not. But Jesus recognised that some were. Matthew 8, 16. And when even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and cast out the spirit with his word and healed all that were sick. If you're here in this programme and you say, Pastor McKivitt, I think I'm having a demonic attack. I know what you've said. That what you've said applies to me. Then phone those numbers now and let somebody pray for you. Phone this number here, 0778690931, and I will pray for you. Phone those other numbers where men and women of God are waiting to pray for you. Because we are today, it's going to be your day for deliverance, the day that you walk in victory. And look what it says in Matthew 22. And they brought unto him one, uh, I'll read that again, Matthew 8, 16. And when Eden was come, they brought unto him many that were beset with devils. And he cast out the spirit in his word and healed all that were sick. Matthew 9, 20, 32 to 33. And they went out and behold, they brought unto him a dumb man possessed with a devil. He could not speak because he had a demon. That does not mean that everyone that cannot speak is a devil. That's not what we're saying. But in this case, that was the reason behind it. And uh, Matthew, Matthew uh, 9.33, And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spoke, and the multitude marvels. Sometimes the devil has to be cast out before you get the victory. The demon that is hindering you has to be cast out. That's why we need to have spiritual warfare and we need to realise who we are fighting against. Matthew 12, verse 22, it said, and they, and they brought one that was beset of a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him. It's a match that the blind, deaf and dumb spoke. Jesus said that there was a woman that had a spirit of infirmity. Luke 13, 11, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed to get together and could not wise lift her up. She was bent over and she could not lift herself up. And Jesus saw it and called unto her and said, Woman, thou art loosed from their infirmity. Today is the day that you are going to be loosed. Today is the day that you are going to be set free. Today is the day of your victory. And the religious people, they criticised it. Religious people always criticise healings, always criticise miracles, Always criticise deliverance. And, G and um, look what Jesus said. Luke 13, verse 60. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years. 
No, he said in that case, the infirmity was caused by a devil. However, as I said, not all sicknesses are caused by the devil. Jesus didn't cast out the demon of every sick person he met because it wasn't a demon. There's no mention of Jesus casting out a demon when he healed the woman with the issue of blood because that was a natural infirmity. That was a physical infirmity, not a demon. Jesus never cast out the blind spirit when he healed blind Bartimaeus because it was not a demon. Jesus didn't cast out demons when he cleansed the lepers because they were not demons. Jesus never cast out a demon when he healed the man at the, at, at the pool of Bethsaida. So not all sickness are caused by the devil, but some are. And friends, there's so much I can say about this, but we're very limited to time in this television broadcast. But if you feel bound, I can pray for you. I can spend more time for, with you. If you just phone those numbers, especially this number here, 0778 I will spend much time as, as you'd like talking to you and minister unto you, all those other numbers. And don't forget, come along to the meeting tomorrow at the Dominion Christ Church, starting 11 o'clock in the morning, and come along for that great miracle service. The address is on your screen now. All friends, we've run out of time. And until we meet again, this is Pastor David McKivitt saying unto you that no matter what the problem may be, Jesus is the answer. In Christ Church, London, under the leadership of Rev. Godwin Ajegbu, invites you to our power service. Deliverance, healing, restoration and salvation. Are you broken or oppressed? Come and be partaker of free salvation. Our service times are Monday Deliverance Service, time 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Friday, Bible Teaching and Prayer, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Sunday Service, Holy Ghost Move, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Come and receive power to overcome in life. For more information please call us on the following number, 0742948 or email revgodwin at dominionchristchurchlondon.co.uk or dominionchristchurch at yahoo.co.uk Trains and buses station, Alberton station, Wembley Central station, Wembley Park station, Hanger Lane station, and Harlesden station.